and uh, let's um, yeah, so let me share my screen. So yeah, so today, as I said, we're going to be talking about prompt engineering. And since this is not our first time, it's not your first time um, uh, dealing with prompt engineering, actually. Uh, it's not even our first time having a tutorial on prompt, on prompt engineering. Can we can we just have like um, maybe from your experience, what were like um, say like you can define what prompt engineering is and like in your experience what were the challenges that you faced um, like when you when you perform this like uh, prompt engineering what were the challenges that were try to overcome what have you learned um, yeah so like. Let me hear from you. Any volunteers? So like, okay. Um, so just someone to, yeah, okay, Hillary. Yeah, so, uh, that's an opinion. So, the, so some of the challenges I uh, encountered uh, during that time uh, in prompt engineering or like um, you, uh, the, the, the LLM was hallucinating most of the time and uh, you had to be specific in the prompt but when you when you become more specific it becomes also more fixed on on uh, it it kind of doesn't generate uh, doesn't perform well on generalization so you have to keep refining uh, uh making sure that it covers other parts and also becomes specific and what gives you what you really wanted also also like when you uh the 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 prompt may uh as a challenge in like the number of tokens it takes so you have to be more specific in crafting the prompt uh yeah which is a skill in itself that you have to most okay uh that's great so yes uh, so hillary mentioned prompt problems with or the thing that you have to face with uh, prompt engineering hallucinations from the LLM and like being um, um being specific in what you are like um, you want from the from the um, in the in, in your output so yes so great answer thank you uh, uh there was another answer from Gitacho. Uh, from community is the way you ask our models to answer our specific question to get a better answer we should have a um, fantastic prompt okay that's a, a nice way to or uh, a nice way to put it but yes exactly that's so the goal of prompt engineering is um the main thing here like um oh actually we could like we could add, add, like hear from more of you, if anyone wants to share what they learned uh, in their experience dealing with, yeah, okay, Michael. Okay, uh, prompt engineering is like uh, creating the most effective way or uh, query for the LLM with a clear objective and to get the better answer out of it. So, in, in my experience, like being very specific in the questions. Uh, and give give it, give it a context and like uh, explain it like i am a beginner or advanced or something like that so when we give it some background or context something like that it can understand better yeah, that's my experience so far okay that's great thank you yes um again we are having like this uh, now repeated that you have to be more specific you what you want from the LLM uh, to get a better performance or better answer. Okay, that's great. Anyone else? Anyone else want to share their experience or what they learned? Yeah, Beth? 
Go ahead. Maybe the other thing I understand is that uh, LLMs are uh, trained on public data. So what, uh, sometimes for uh, an organization, we may want uh, some contextualized data or and we want the LLM to answer that. So one of the things you can do is in prompt engineering is introducing that data so that the LLM could answer from that. Okay, yes, that's uh, right. Uh, that's one very important uh, use case of prompt engineering, which can be like a specifically RAG. Is that what you want, you want to, that's what you meant? Using the uh, retrieval augmented um, generation. Um, of course, you can add context in different ways, but of course, RAG is like one, like how to systematically build this. So yes, great answer from Japes. Yes, so this is one another like uh, kind of prompt engineering or another um, technique. Uh, anyone else? This is Ham. Okay. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So, uh, prompt is a question. So prompt engineering in my thought would be uh, producing effective prompts. Uh, to be interacting with our large language model? Yes. Um, Did you hear me? Yes, we he uh, heard you. So have you like um, learned something in particular when you did prompt engineering before? Or when you like just tried, interacted with uh, LLMs? Um, well, something I noticed would be uh, we need to have a more effective prompt in order for the start to be answering good questions or answering our questions properly. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, so, yeah, so anyone who uses like uh, LLMs in any uh, extensive way will kind of recognize that like um, um, they are very sensitive to what you write, what the prompt inclu includes. So, um then like uh, basically you have to be um like careful and like systematic with how you write your prompt very good answers i think anyone else um let's take uh, another answer from and then we can move on to the presentation but yeah so basically everything is mentioned here is like uh, yeah, these are techniques or like the main challenges of how to be de dealing with prompting LLMs and how to deal with that. So, any other, another person? Just one last volunteer and then <laughs> come move on. Go ahead. Okay, uh, I don't think uh, there is uh, addition, but uh, I can describe the, the LLM like uh, a C and the prompt is uh, how we can get what we want from this C. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Nice, uh, nice description. Uh, Gitachi, do you want to say something also? Yeah, just to add an example. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, since the, mo the since the LLM model does not say anything that uh, I don't know, you can write anything and they will reply you something. If, if we see could debugging some code, if you are not specific with your problem or your error in your code, they will provide you some way to try. So uh, writing a very good prompt will give you a shorter time of the waiting or if you are not writing good uh, these uh, prompts you will be in uh, uh, an ocean of suggestions from the llms that will not go or solutions for yourself yes yes so uh, i was uh, i was in situations yeah. like this in our yeah. uh, time yeah just to add this okay 
yeah so this is a great point to uh, to, to um great some great thing to to point out is the debugging problem is a issue so if you yeah if you don't use a very an effective prompt uh, you will face a problem with when you are debugging what is the output that you're getting from the LLM, which is something that you need to, of course, to do um, to if you want to understand like uh, why you are getting this kind of output and like uh, how to get better one and like um, just to increase the reliability and uh, the performance of your of your of your um, system or that you're using the LLM model. So yeah, great answer from, great point from you, Gitachu. Thank you very much. So yeah, so you already, as I said, um, we are basically going to go over like these things that, uh, that mentioned and maybe mention a few um, advanced techniques that some of you, some you already know about and some of you might not. There are many um, um, advanced uh, prompt engineering techniques. And you can look uh, look them up and um, and read about. Uh, there are many that are coming up uh, all the time. So just like um, again to, uh, to again de define prompt engineering, even though like it was defined so many like uh, by you already uh, very well and in very like creative ways. So yeah. So prompt engineering is, yes, is developing and optimizing the prompt that you use to interact with the LLM so that you get a better performance for whatever your application you are using your LLM for. The problem, of course, is coming from, or the problem or the opportunity, let's say, is coming from uh, the fact that LLMs are language models and they are interacting with natural languages, which natural language is not, is more flexible and expressive. And, also have like can one because of that it can be can have some ambiguity also of course um llms are probabilistic models they are like they're generating uh based on probability it's not about um deterministic output so um yeah so the, whatever you get might depend on um like there are sensitivity to what is, is in the prompt and what you get can depend really on um, minor modifications in the in the prompt. So um, so yeah, this is prompt engineering. Prompt engineering applies to any use for LLMs. Um, we in, in the examples or what we are talking going to talk about about like how to um, structure the prompt and how to write the template. This is like will be more about like when you are interacting with a chat model or instruction uh, like models that are fine tuned for instruction following. But it's like prompt engineering applies to any kind of um, actually interacting with LLMs or even any like generative AI that like uh, takes text as input. Okay. So yeah, so a prompt elements. These are like just like what you write usually will have like um, um, an instruction, could have an instruction telling the model what you really, what you want. Yes. Question? Is that true? Uh, sorry, I'm not sharing my screen. Is that what you also wanted to say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's, I'm sorry. I didn't share my screen. Yes. Um, I'm actually going through a presentation, but yeah, I forgot to share my screen. So yeah, this is what I was just saying just now, about defining the, what is prompt engineering, and uh, this, this you can see my screen. Um, what is prompt engineering, and this like uh, these points about like the flexibility and ambiguity, uh, a possible ambiguity of language, language, um, natural languages. Um, so yeah, I'm going to talk about like um, when you're writing a prompt. Um, generally, you can include like this can be like the elements. Let's say um, it can include like for example, I have a prompt here, which is asking a model to classify the text into neutral, negative, or positive. Text is I think the food is of was okay, and then I'm writing sentiment, and this is my input to the model. The model is going to output for me like going to generate like uh, um 
whatever out this after this sentiment. So looking at this prompt, you can see like here, like the first line is an instruction. I'm telling the model what I want, the kind of task I want it to perform, the specific task I want it. So here I want to classify the sentiment or like in, in three classes. Um, there is an input, of course, is, here is the text I'm inputting here. Sentiment here, this is uh, like, I'm writing it here like this, is an, an output on the indicator, which of course I, I don't necessarily have to write it. I could have had my question like with the first two lines, but this just makes my output better. So this is one of the like um, tips to, to writing a better prompt is giving the model an output indicator uh, to, uh, and this can be like just the word, the starting, the start of whatever you want it to generate, or like it could be more specific, you like specify the type of format of the output more in details. Um, there is another extra thing that here is not here, but like um, in this example, but the context, it can be any additional information or external information that you want the model to use to produce your the output. So this is just the basic elements, or you can think of a prompt in this way. Um, okay, so when using um, a prompt, um, it could be useful to write a prompt template. Okay, so the goal of a prompt template is having like a um, um, a specific format, but then also like in having like a, uh, allowing for any kind of uh, flexibility uh, you want. So you can define, for example, the instruction can be fixed, um, uh, like the, the specific task you want the prompt to perform the objective in a specific instruction. So, and then like um, you can define the basic components that are the ones we talked about, like the context, the expected output, in a specific format and then allow of course like is the variable um part of the prompt let's let's say is the input would be coming from the user or whatever and um uh, and then that part could be like um like left as a variable with a placeholder and then like um the, again the whole um design of a template should be like clear with simple languages, specific, uh, clear structure. Um, um, yeah, so just like, um, or precise, clear, precise uh, language and clear structure. Uh, you can separate the components with like delimiters of any of some kind, um, like you can define in a structure. So all of these are tips for how to like write your template your prompt using the limiters between the different components um, is like one of these uh, tips to, to follow. Okay, so we can talk about, yeah, okay. So we can talk about the challenges and then about like uh, the general guidance for like writing prompts. Um, so yeah, as mentioned by you, uh, by like your colleagues, right now is that yeah so there's a problem with the model not understanding what or not giving you exactly what you want um because like uh, because of any ambiguity in the language there's a problem with hallucination the model as always uh, uh the model always give you an output uh, regardless and it will not tell you just by itself to that I don't know, or like uh, your question doesn't make sense or whatever. It will just give you some output. Um, it will hallucinate things that are not true. Uh, it will give you wrong answers sometimes. So all of these are possible and these are problems you have to face, uh, to have to um, deal with. Uh, if you like, um, when designing a prompt, if you like, um, maybe you can make the, your prompt, you want it to you to like define the template for your prompt for a particular kind of task, but maybe like the problem is that if you write a very specific prompt, it can be like overfitting, like with this, like for, for like working only with, with specific cases, but not generally. 
generally like a problem another problem with LLMs is that they have bias which is just like it's just true like there are bias in LLMs they have different kind of biases part of it is coming from the data part of it is even like just how like um, there are these like for example some systematic biases where like uh, the model sometimes like will well um for example when using a really large prompt or really large input the model to will um, uh, its attention will just be on like the beginning of the end of the prompt for this um, some systematic reason uh, but there are like biases coming from the data as well and so you have sometimes it's like for example if you are using your LLM to uh, depending on like uh, your use case some for some for some uses like the biases that arise from the data can like manifest in the output of the LLM and you have to some to um, you have to like guard against that um, you have to guard against it or just like not to enforce it even more um again that as was mentioned by um Japes, is like sometimes you have a specific context or domain that is not part of the data that the model was trained on the model was like maybe like uh, trained on public data on data that was available at a particular time um uh, it doesn't know about everything uh, also just the objective of training them the models are and um, large um, these large language models are trained and fine-tuned for general language understanding they are not trained for um specific reasoning that might be applied for particular domains uh, so in that case you have to adapt you can use prompt engineering uh, of course as you remember from just not so long ago last week when you were working, like there is, uh, if you think about this, these languages are specific domains, the Amharic or Swahili are specific domains that the, the models were not um, trained on. In that case, it's not prompt engineering that is suitable to deal with that. It was more fine tuning, right? Um, so yeah, this is specific point, depending on what kind of domain you're dealing with, you might be like, um, you might be needing uh, or like fine tuning might be more suitable to deal with it or it can be prompt engineering so this is just like um it will depend uh for example if it's like more yeah so i already get like there is an example where like the languages need um um you needed fine tuning to 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 get the model uh, um, knowledge in different languages that were not trained it was not trained on um but for example if like you want um, your model to answer um uh, legal questions uh, that are informed by the law of the country and you want it to answer in like reason and answer based on like logic is a legal reasoning uh, you might not need to of course you can still fine tune your model to do that on the data that's come legal data but it might be that prompt engineering is enough by just you using like rag system you provide your uh, like your uh, model with a few examples of how to answer such questions provide it with the right context and then it can like perform for you well enough of course prompt engineering is less costly as uh, compared to fine tuning um yeah so that's just like an example about this um okay so this is generally the challenges uh here are like where um so any questions so far let's just stop take a little break here so yeah, so far, like um, I was just um, saying some things that are just general and um, like, you know, more or less uh, all of this stuff. But like, let me hear if you have any other any question.
Good. Okay. Um, let's uh, continue. So these are general guidance. Uh, so um, um, there are more like general guidance for prompt engineering, but like um, there are, as I mentioned, there are more advanced techniques that can be used. But just generally, prompt engineering is an iterative process. So it's saying that you, something that is not one step you usually do. You have to, to start and then develop further and further. Um, so you start simple, of course. It's always the simplest thing that you can think of. And then increase the complexity with each step. Um, there are things about like uh, breaking complex tasks into subtasks um generally so like just thinking that it's an iterative process and like even the prompting and the output can be iterative at well, as well um uh, again as we mentioned that you can think um the prompt of course the prompt can be just a question simple question but as we mentioned like uh, you can add an instruction um clearly in the beginning or in the end um again because if you remember i just mentioned that some models have this tendency to focus more on the beginning or the end of the prompt so just put the, in your instruction which is very important for your prompt at the beginning or at the end of it you can use separators or delimiters to separate the instruction from the the rest of the prompt the context of the input uh, be as specific as possible, more detail and more descriptive is a better. As like mentioned by you in your own experiences, you have faced this. Um, of course, like being specific, detailed and descriptive, you have to keep in mind that your prompt cannot be, it has a length a limit. So you have to mind, you have to keep that in mind. So yeah, um, you cannot try this as long as possible. You have to keep in mind that you have a, a specific length allowed, but within that, be as precise, as specific, as as descriptive as possible. Um, generally, it's like uh, advice to tell the the LLM what you want, not what you don't want. Like don't tell it to do this and this, not um don't do that or don't give me that even though like of course you can can use that but it's generally um advice to to um to say what what to do and not what not to do um another thing uh lead the output in the right direction by example writing the first word or giving the actual like what should the output look like the type format and how it should start um it's a generative model so when leading it giving it the first word it's like um, it's uh, you are helping it to to give you a better answer um or the answer you want uh then of course they have to like you know, whenever appropriate and uh, suitable use advanced prop, uh, prompting techniques as uh, we will talk about in a minute in a, in a moment I uh, can test and assist your prompts. These are going to be um, uh, later sessions, but um, like I expect that you already know, like at least uh, somewhat about this. Just reading um, the challenge document. Um, you can also version and track the performance. Again, uh, it's we saw said it's an iterative um, process. And just following whatever, like whenever you are doing something that you are improving and updating in different steps, you track it. We have code uh, tracking, we have code version and tracking, we have data version and tracking, we have machine learning, um, uh, machine learning training, uh, modeling, versioning and tracking. Of course. This is part of the machine learning modeling, and uh, you can version and track the performance of your prompts the same way. This is a systematic thing to do and to ensure just like uh, that you don't lose anything that you have done. You can go back and just like you know how what is the value of versioning and tracking. Okay, so uh, we're going to be discussing this point. 
these two points are going to be discussed later on in the in the week um, in the tutorial I mean but of course you can read uh, I think there are references and you can uh, in the, the can document and you can read about them on your own okay uh, before jump begin um, uh, are there any questions So you like earlier, you already mentioned a couple of like uh, maybe um, advanced prompting techniques, but like um, maybe you can uh, say again, which advanced prompting technique can you think of? Just make it like more interactive. Please like, um, we're not going to go into so much details about any of them, but like, uh, just let me see what have you tried already, what have, what do you know? Anyone? Yes, Jafar. Okay, uh, I'm not sure it's advanced, but we are uh, last in the last, not this one, but uh, on, uh, I think on week four projects, I tried to use a long chain uh, template based uh, prompt engineering. I think it's one of uh, the techniques to use a template for uh, prompt engineering. Okay, that's yeah, uh, good, thank you. Um, nice, yes. Uh, anyone else? Something that you have tried or maybe you read about and haven't? I haven't tried, I mean, you just read about, you know, about okay. So, my question, Henok, um, is uh, like, do you know of any, do you know or have you tried any advanced prompting technique? like be beside just writing a simple prompt or being more specific in your prompt have you tried anything more any so okay you know maybe you have you have but you you just like uh, i'm not aware that it's so grace is saying zero shot so zero shot is um is a, a simple but it is one of the like uh it's a, one of the prompting techniques, so you are correct. It's actually mentioned. And when you say zero shot, what comes next? Or what is the, it's used opposed to, usually? Called zero, zero shot. Because you can have a multiple shot um, um, prompting. Uh, can someone def define the multiple or multi shot or few shot uh, prompt? Yes, I'm back. Uh, sorry, do you mean I didn't I didn't get the definition or? Yeah, just like what it is. Uh, okay, mm, uh, zero shot means the model hasn't been trained on uh, being asked a question that hasn't been trained on so and then the much bigger the number is the more likely to be uh, trained on the data okay and do you know what is few shot um prompting so it's opposed to zero shot there is a few shot um prompting yes michael yeah, I think the, the zero thought means like we simply ask the model to perform some tasks and we expect it to understand how it should, it should answer 
what mm -hmm. what is being asked but in, in but in in the few short part it it requires giving some examples of the our questions and so we should we should give it examples and teach it i think yeah exactly that's exactly correct and what uh, abu Bakr said also I think is I do this to that I, in zero shot we just ask our model to answer like or give us like whatever um, we just give it the question our question or our instruction without any extra context or extra examples and we expect it just to answer in few shots we give it examples of how to answer our question or how to perform the task and then it to, uh, the model will learn from the examples learn the pattern and then give us um an answer so yeah exactly so these are two of the like advanced um from the techniques let's say zero shot doesn't seem like advanced but yeah it's like um uh it's just used an, a, an in opposed to few shot prompting and as i said zero shot prompting works if like uh, our model already was trained or similar tasks and it already knows how to deal with this kind of task. So um, we just directly prompt it with whatever we want without any examples, no demonstrations, just like, and um, so yeah. Again, it works well if it has already prior knowledge and experience in its training or fine tuning on this kind of task. Um, yeah, so there's not, not much to say about zero shot. Uh, in the few shot prompting, we, um, we give the model a few examples, like let's say in our sentiment analysis before, we could tell it like an instruction, we want you classify or like classify the sentiment of this, of the, of the following uh, input uh, as neutral, positive or negative. And then we give it examples that let's say, um, then say like uh, today's weather is nice. And then output is uh, positive. And uh, like, and then a few examples of like that, and then we give it finally the input we want it to actually classify. Um, so this uh, already improves the, the the performance of our model because the LLMs are usually like are are like um, pick up on the patterns in our examples and give us better answers. Um, still, um, there are limitations, of course. Uh, first, it doesn't work on very complicated tasks, um, especially like the tasks that require some reasoning. Um, uh, it requires a longer prompts. Uh, sometimes that could be like, um, of course, longer prompts uh, means like um, more computation and latency and risk that you can overstep uh, like the the limit and uh, the um, the limit of the what the length of the prompt can be uh sometimes it happens of course like when you do this you have to check that it works well sometimes your model will learn the wrong pattern from your primary form examples uh yeah so instead of answering the way you want it uh it will just learn a wrong um kind of so it will be kind of uh focusing on the wrong, wrong thing and uh, learning the wrong thing so here when it comes to like when you check it test it and see how it works. So this is just a few um, uh, simple, at least some of the simpler advanced techniques. So going back, so these are examples, as examples of advanced um, prompting technique. There is a chain of thought prompting, there is generated knowledge prompting, there is the retrieval augmented generation, as we mentioned, providing the context, uh, actually retrieving the context you want from a database and providing it as context to your prompt. Uh, so, and there are multiple other advanced techniques. Um, there is React prompting, what's called React prompting, there is re-prompting. These are all a uh, different kind of like, the, is, is the, the thing is that like whenever like simple, a simple prompt doesn't give you the right answer. You have to start trying um, new things. And um, so, okay, sorry. Um, so before I go on, do does any one of you want to like um, um, 
or I already asked you this. So, uh, yes, is there a question? Is that true? Yes. Uh, what are uh, what type of parameters are we going to use choosing between these uh, prompting techniques? Uh, okay, so we have to do like we have to test basically. We have to generate use cases and test uh, the um, how the prompts are performing. Um, uh, so we will we will talk about this later. So like uh, let's just take it as we are going to be ranking and evaluating the performance of our prompts. Um, but later on we can like I think tomorrow. Uh, we'll talk about this more in detail, um, how to evaluate the prompts, because it's not, uh, yeah, it's an important question. So, yes. Um, okay, so just to, like, we can discuss a little bit, uh, a few of those. So, the chain of thought, um, so you might already know about this or not, basically, it's um, this is especially like for like a task that requires some kind of um, reasoning, like uh, uh, um, like for example, mathematical reasoning or like uh, symbolic reasoning tasks. Uh, this um, when providing like a zero shot or few shot is not enough for the model to get it right. Um, and uh, so basically what we want our model to do is not to give us just an answer right away we want it to reason and in steps to follow some a chain of thought basically steps in reasoning to get to the answer or to get to the, uh, the output and you can do that in in uh, one of two ways we can either use zero shot um chain of thought which we just tell the model think in steps or uh, let's think step by step or walk through this problem step by step just like that and then add our like um, whatever question we want and then the model um will think on steps it, so it, it will give us like uh, some kind of uh, reasoning um step by step reasoning um another way to do this is to actually give it an example so if we have a, like a particular kind of um, task um we can give it a few examples where like the answer follows um a particular reasoning steps and basically tell our model to follow like similar kind of steps and yeah so it can be like zero shot or few shot um so just to see so um so first like i'm talking about the few shot um uh, chain of thought or here you can see like if you want our like let me just read the mo the the prompt here the prompt here is uh, like um uh so i'm using here like the standard prompting and chain of thought prompting here I'm, I'm in both cases i'm using few shots so i'm giving my model one example actually so here this is just a mathematical problem a arithmetic problem i'm saying like look Roger has five tennis balls. He buys two more cans of tennis balls. Each can has three tennis balls. And how many tennis balls does he have now? So this is a simple arithmetic problem. And the answer is 11, the correct answer. Then I give it another question. Uh, the cafeteria has 23 apples. Uh, if they use 20 to make lunch and bought six more, how many apples do they have is 23 minus 20 plus six, which um, should be nine. But okay, the model output was 24 or 27. I don't know which, like, um, so this is from the paper actually from 2020, 2022. Um, so this is just like a few shot prompting is not working. It's giving me the wrong answer. So with chain of thought prompting, what they do is that they, in the first example, instead of just giving the answer at 11, they tell us how to think about it. So they say like, Roger started with five balls, two kinds of three tennis balls. Each is six tennis balls, five plus six is 11. The answer is 11. This is just exactly how you think about the problem, right? And then give it the same question about the cafeteria. Then the, the model 
will be like following the steps, uh, similar steps here. The cafeteria had 23 apples, so originally they used 20 to make lunch, so they had 23 minus 20, which is 3 equals 3. They bought six more apples, so they have 3 plus 6 equals 9. The answer is 9. And now the answer is correct. Because now you basically showed it how to think, reason about the problem or what steps to follow um, to, 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 uh, to, uh, to arrive at the answer. And this looks like um, kind of impressive, right? Uh, what is more, even more impressive is that actually few uh, uh, zero shot um, chain of thought also works. So this is the first, like uh, in another paper, um, they did the same thing, the few shot, the, the same as the example before, few shot uh, uh, prompt, and then a few shot chain of thought prompt. Okay, then they did a zero shot. Okay, this is a zero shot um, example. And then they give a zero shot chain of thought. What happens is that, plus the, the question, they just tell the, the model to let's think step by step. That's all. And surprisingly, I will say, surprisingly, the model actually follow, uh, generates steps and arrives at the right answer. Okay. Um, I don't know. I find it impressive. Uh, because the models have some kind of uh, ability to reason uh, when prompted to do so. The thing is, of course, um, the Okay, so both both kind of uh, chain of thought uh, prompting work, uh, but the zero shot um, um, chain of thought works like less reliably or like maybe the few shot works better, like it has better performance. Um, of course, because you are showing it the right kind of reasons when you are prompting it with just one, like just tell it follow steps. Sometimes it will follow nonsensical steps. Actually, they are not going to be correct. Um, and if actually, if you prompt your model like this way a few times, or if you generate multiple outputs of from the same prompt, you will find that it is following different kind of steps every time. Um, so it's not like um, it's not going to be super uh, as reliable as few shot. Um, so this is not as like uh, as high performance as the other one, and this one requires you to write handcrafted um, answer examples and answers, which um, is not always going to be like especially like think about your your challenge this time. And you are trying to automate uh, automatically generate prompts, not um, not exactly handcraft them. So this is not super like um, uh, you, you are not going to be able to automate this way this method uh, right away. Uh, but of course, people came up with a few a couple of ways to actually deal with this um, to automate this few short chain of thought. There is um, uh, I guess like I, I would mention it just in passing, but. Uh, you can look it more like let's see i think i maybe i have like uh yeah so there is auto chain of thought this way is actually you you generate like um a sample of of questions and then uh basically use the llm to cluster like the questions and like uh, use the zero shot chain of thought to generate uh, different kind of reasoning steps, and then use those generated as examples in um, in a few short chain of thought. So it's an automatic way to generate the examples. Basically, this is one way. Another thing to deal with it is um, uh, again, this is reprompting is another way to deal with this. Um, it's uh, basically it's a, uh, going to be generating uh, the um, chain of thought recipes or like reasoning steps without any human intervention. So without needing to handcraft the actual steps, and this is like uh, is done by like um, 
basically, and it's another method, and you can like look at the paper or look at the code they provide. Um, is that they like uh, uh, basically they provide um, just uh, taking um, to be like it, it's uh, iteratively creating sample uh, of reasoning and like uh, using it, them like iteratively to generate um, training problems basically. So yeah. So these are like uh, yeah I'm, I'm saying I know that I'm saying something like really maybe hand wavy more than in details, but um, these are just examples, not necessarily something that you will need to uh, particularly look into. But yes, especially the automate automated automated kinds of like advanced um, prompting could be useful in 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 this challenge. Um, yeah, any questions? Yes, like, uh, of course, we're almost out of time. So let me just go through like uh, the, um, I'm not going to go through like the, uh, the rug, the re retriever, um, retrieval augmented um, prompting of generation actually. So this is going to be, you already like um, went through it and there is more about it because you, you have to use it for this challenge. Uh, but just more on like um, here, like there is this React, uh, I'm kind of call React. I'm not sure how it's pronounced actually, but it looks like it's React. It's from, from it's, a, it's a framework where basically your LLM will be using an external tool. You have already come across this, I think. Um, uh, for example, Lion Chain have this built-in functionality that will like uses this uh, React framework to to build agent to perform particular tasks. So basically, um, uh, you're using an LLM in addition of something of some extra um, tool. And yeah, so like, this is just Lion Chain. Uh, how how to actually work with this in practice? Um, yeah, all of this method like are coming from papers where you can actually also look at the codes and the exact example they provide um, and how to implement them. Uh, prompt chaining is another thing you can do. Uh, this is very good. It's very useful for complex uh, tasks. Um, it's when like not only you divide your problem into subtasks, but you also basically divide your prompt into sub prompts and you're going to like iteratively uh, prompt, you, prompt your LLM and with the with the output of the first prompt you're going to be used as an input to the second prompt and so on and so forth so till you try to arrive to your final answer um Okay, so uh, as I said, these are useful for complex tasks. And uh, this is very good uh, when it's like, when you're dealing with complex tasks, instead of writing one prompt that is very complex and then like uh, analyzing the output of from the LLM is going to be like not super, not easy. Not easy to analyze, not easy to debug. If you're using prompt chaining, it would be easier to see where the problem is, is how the problem is happening. Uh, or like which which step is not performing as bad as as well. Uh, so it's easier de to debug. And um, so one like uh, just let me give you an, an one use case is um, uh, let's say you are uh, using LLM as to power a chatbot, an assistant chatbot, like as a customer service. A kind of chatbot and then you are asking this uh, chatbot to uh, you want it to like answer the customer questions but uh, in different ways depending on the like uh, for example the, the customer can ask about um the like payment or subscription questions and like it can ask also about um uh uh let's say it's like, let, let's say it's like a service for uh, should have provided an example for this because just saying this is saying it is not very clear but let's say just like um you have this customer service chatbot 
that is answering questions about different kind of uh, domains uh, within your service. So there are like technical uh, questions. Uh, let's say it's like, um, let's say it's Nana, um, like you have this for 10 Academy and it's, uh, you are asked, you can ask it about, let's say uh, about um, the challenge documents or technical questions. You can ask it also about like how to um, things about maybe the the 10x platform which are these are different kind of questions maybe you can ask it about um scheduling and stuff and and like if you want uh, the answer for for this different kind of question to be different you can like uh, write two kinds like a chain of two let's say uh, the first prompt is going to take like uh, let's say you want it to take the user question and classified in what kind of uh, of uh, question it is uh, user is asking, and then the output of that uh, prompt uh, of that prompt you use it as input to the second one where you take the question and the classification and basically pass your your prompt to a particular like a template for for output. Um, depending on on the classification of the question, I don't know if this makes sense. It's very hand weaving. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry that I didn't like uh, put an actual uh, view of an example, but um, so yeah, these are a few advanced. Um, there are more, of course. Uh, I didn't actually mention the generated knowledge prompting is just another way of how to basically include a chain of thought uh, in a way, uh, forcing the model to 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 answer depending on an actual um, a, a, a good reasoning instead of just like giving you just an answer. Um, yeah, so this like particularly kind of used to face, to deal with hallucinations. Um, another way to like, there is a, there are other ways to other advanced techniques that can handle particular, sorry, particular kind of problem challenges with prompt engineering. Um, yeah, so let's say that's it for, for the presentation for now. <laughs> no. uh, because we're out of time. Um, okay, so any questions? anything at all i don't know does this uh, is this an indication that you understand everything i said or that it was too confusing Ah, okay. Uh, I will need some time to process this. Yes. So you can. Um, uh, there are these uh, very nice guides. I think uh, we have them here. Um, yeah. So this prompt engineering guide, which explains a lot of these uh, advanced techniques um, nicely. So yes. Um, can see like um, these are ones that we talked about, and there are others. Of course, we haven't. Um, um, and yeah, basically you can find. And uh, also the the papers that are explain these different techniques are also there. I think so. Let's just um, generate knowledge. Okay, so. They refer to the paper itself from chaining, and they actually give examples. So this is actually can be very helpful. Um, yeah. Anyway, so yeah, it's just to let's end the session here. If you have any other questions, if you have any questions, uh, Slack, and also we'll meet tomorrow for 
session. So yeah, uh, thank you all for being here. Thank you for your contributions in this uh, session. That was very like, um, um, it's very, very nice.